Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, she was on a work trip and had her own hotel room. So what or who was the black figure kneeling next to her bed? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, share your real ghost stories with us because we like to hear them. Call in at 855-853-4802. You can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You could become a premium subscriber. With that, you get advanced episodes, access to the archive, no commercials. You could sign up through Apple Podcasts, try it three days free. You can also sign up on patreon.com slash realghoststories or just go to ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes. Kathy Gordon's here today. So this well, is... This is one of the reasons why staying at hotels always freaks me out. <laughs> I what love if, hotel stories. I love hotel ghost stories. You know I do. And what if you, like, wake up and there's a black figure kneeling next to your bed? <laughs> that's, that's pretty creepy for darn sure. That, <laughs> I would <laughs> say so. <laughs> I, I, you know, the thing is, when they write in these stories about hotels, I, w- I wish they would tell us so we know whether we want to try to stay there or try not to stay there. Now this like one sometimes doesn't... I think I'd like to try, and then other times it's really creepy, and I think maybe I don't want to stay at that one. Because this says Window Rock, Arizona. I don't know how big Ooh, Window Rock, window... Arizona is. I don't know where it is. Window it's Rock, all one word. Two words. Window Rock. Rock. Okay. So I don't huh. know. It, that could get narrowed down real quick if they don't have very many hotels. Well, it doesn't sound like it's a big town, but mm. it might be outside of Phoenix. I was going to say it could be a suburb. So here's yeah. the story. It says, I had never experienced paranormal entities or strange things like that until it was just after the new year this past January. I had to travel for work and they assigned me to take my coworker and go to Window Rock, Arizona to present. On the way there, there's enough pressure right there with the words to present. Yeah, well, it looks like it's like on the New Mexico-Arizona line. I wonder what she was presenting. Kind of by Gallup, New Mexico. So it says, on the way there, my coworker told me that the last time she was there in Window Rock, she heard something tapping on metal at 5 a.m., when we got to the hotel, my coworker requested that we be put in different rooms away from her room last time. The concierge put us in two rooms, three doors down from the original room. I'm just going to say that doesn't sound far enough. When I got into my room, it was super stuffy. The atmosphere had this overly packed room feel to it. I didn't think much about it and continued my business around the room. I don't know what the business around the room was. Probably putting clothes away and stuff. I left the room for dinner and then returned to my room about 8.30 p.m. I continued doing all of my paperwork and watching TV. The room still felt stuffy, but I turned the heater on because it was supposed to snow that night. I fell asleep with the TV on about 11.30 p.m. I woke up again at 1 a.m. to turn off the TV At about 4 a.m., I woke up to hear this loud scratching noise like rough nails on wood. It was almost in my ear. I had my back facing the door and was confused, thinking it was the heater. I turned my body to see what was going on, and as I turned around, I saw this black figure kneeling right next to my bed. It looked like it was digging I was immediately terrified and turned back over. Like, not only is it a black figure, but it's digging. Digging into, what did it look like it was digging into? Doesn't say the, it was digging. The bed? The floor? I'm going to say if it was right next to the bed, it would look like it was digging into the floor. Okay. Suddenly, I could hardly breathe and I couldn't move. The scratching noise kept getting louder. I man- I managed to flip back around to face it. But my eyes felt forced shut. I couldn't even speak or move to switch the light on. Finally, after about three minutes, I managed to yell the words, knock it off, and then silence. Everything fell silent. I was able to move to turn on the light. I sat up on my bed. I looked where I saw the figure. There was nothing. The carpet was fine. The bed next to it had been untouched. 
I tried to fall back asleep with the light on, but that wasn't working, so I just lay there until my alarm went off. During breakfast, I was talking to my coworker about it, and she said she was up too and had problems sleeping the whole night. I told her about my experience, and she was stunned. We asked the hotel staff about it, and they said strange things happen all the time. When we told the concierge what had happened, she didn't make a big deal of it and said, we'll just put you in a room on the other side. Like, it was a normal thing for that to happen. I have refused to stay in Window Rock again out of fear. When I returned to my home in Albuquerque, I started seeing it all. Figures out of the corner of my eye, strange things were happening in the house. I see them all now. So I'm guessing like all the time she's seen them? I don't understand why it's happening that I have lived my whole life without seeing them, but now they choose to have me see them. I think about it all the time. Sorry this is so long, but that's my story. Catalina. So Mm. it says, I see them all now, but I don't know what exactly. Figures out of the corner of my eye, strange things were happening in the house. I see them all now. Or maybe like all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And what is she seeing? Just figures or like shadow figures or apparitions or things I'm moving guessing, or all of it? I'm guessing all of the above. It feels like something has been, you know, opened up in her to you this. Know, I was thinking that too, you know, maybe having that experience or maybe something kind of tagged along and went home with her. But maybe... But, Once something like that happens, and it would be terrifying, do you think you could be more, like, afraid of something happening so you're you're seeing things more frequently just because you're more, it's a more of a fear response? I think it's just more of something has been awakened in her Mm -hmm. that she now can see these things. So how do you make that shit go away? I don't know. That's a good question. Because Um, you don't want to live like that. You'd never sleep. That would be horrible. Interesting. You know, it's as if these things have been going on all around, but just now she can see it. Mm Mm-hmm where she hadn't been able to before. wonder who you could talk to about that. Like, I don't know if she's a religious person, if you talk to your priest or a pastor, or if there's, Mm -hmm. you know, a paranormal But it definitely feels like there's a connection between that, what happened there, and then she came home, and now this. Definitely a connection. You know, but I think I get a feeling it's some sort of, you know, now she's got this ability to see things, something, <sighs> whatever that was, digging. See, that's just what I don't want to ever happen if we go stay in a hotel and then it's haunted and then you come home and your whole life is turned upside down. That's no good. Oh. I, feel, I feel really bad for her. But if she does know some what? people or could get in touch with a like a paranormal group, they might know people who know people. She's around, it, it appears that Window Rock is part of maybe along the, along the Navajo um, area there. And I'm wondering if maybe there's some sort of indigenous people, person that hmm. she could talk to. It almost feels like it might have something to do with that. Maybe. Because of the location. And there, she should reach out. That would be another avenue to go down. Yeah. You know, is there somebody there? Because it might have something to do with that. Mm-hmm. Be- being close to the, the Navajo um, location. Because I looked at the hotels at Window Rock, and there only appear to be like three of them. Three or four. It's a town of about 2,000, I think. Well, here's the deal. If you and I are ever going through Window Rock, I'm going to be like, well, we're not staying there. We have a one in three chance of staying at the (laughs) haunted hotel where shit goes home with you. We're not staying in Window Rock. 
Let's keep on going. Well, you know, at first when you were telling that story, I was thinking, you know, maybe she's actually sleeping and this is a dream and there is something scratching in the room like i hate to say this but mice or a rat or something you know that's scratching in the walls and it's just you know how you incorporate into dreams something but she seemed to you know really feel like she was awake and now this stuff is happening at home yeah so you know i'm just wondering if there's something um that might you know, if she looks into some sort of Navajo kind of spiritualism, if there's something there, you know, I an indigenous would, spiritual yeah. type advisor or something that I could help I wouldn't give her. up on, on trying to find something, though, because that would not be a good way to live yeah. at all. I would just hate yeah. that. Well, let's go on to our next one. It's a phone call. Here we go. Okay. Wanted to pick your brain with something, uh, and I'm not even sure it's, you know, really a, a ghost story. It's just something weird that happened. About a year ago, uh, I was doing personal training, and I had to be at the gym really early. Um, so I was used to waking up at 4.30 in the morning to be at the gym by 5.00. Um, and I, at the time I was living in my nephew's room, um, just had moved from Miami up to, uh, Port Chester, New York. And I was staying with my, my sister and her family and living in my nephew's room. Uh, and it's about four thirty in the morning on a Tuesday morning. And I had woken up, but wasn't ready to get out of bed yet. <clears throat> But I heard somebody come in my room, uh, and I heard a couple of the drawers open, and I assumed that it was either my sister or my brother-in-law, but I didn't really want to get up, scare anybody. It's really early in the morning. Anyway, I I just kind of laid there with my eyes closed. I heard the drawers open, somebody looking for something, the drawers closed, and the whatever it was walked out and kind of closed the door behind them. Thinking nothing of it, I just went on with my day. Fast forward to Friday night, and I'm debating with myself, hey, do I go out uh, tonight? Do I stay inside? What do I do? So I decided to just say, hey, you know what? I'm not going out tonight. Uh, I'm just going to go to bed early, get up, go to the gym the next morning. Uh, and that was that. So I took a melatonin ready to, to get ready for bed. And it's going to sound strange, but at that point I had a little routine of getting out of the shower and then combing my beard, uh, before I went to sleep. And I put that brush on the headboard of my bed and went to sleep. The next morning I wake up. And the comb is destroyed. It's in three different pieces, but it's exactly where I left it the night before. It wasn't on the floor. It didn't look like it was touched. And I asked, I went downstairs and I asked my sister, hey, was, you know, my nieces or nephew in there? She's like, no, we've all been downstairs. Nobody's been in there. And even if it was somebody that came in, they would have had to have broken this thing with me sleeping less than a foot and a half away, broken it, and then put it back in the same exact spot without turning the lights on, without anything. And it even looked, I can send you the picture, it looks like it was almost burned or chewed on. And I asked my sister, I go, hey, like, what? Do you guys know anything or or what's going on? And she was honestly freaked out. Um, But that was it. Then, then done. I never felt anything before, never felt anything after. Nothing ever happened before or after that. So I'm just wondering uh, if you guys have ever heard of anything like that, where maybe something was just kind of 
passing by, but it was weird that that happened on Tuesday. And then I wake up on Saturday morning and that had happened. So, uh, just wanted to pick your brain, say, I love the show. I listen to it all the time. Uh, and thanks a lot. Have a great day, guys. So do you have any theories on that? Okay. Different thoughts. Um, one is, could the first one where somebody came in rummaging around the doors and walked back out again, could that have been a sleepwalking person? Mm-hmm. You know, could that have been someone just, you know, because uh, you do weird things in your when you sleepwalk. You know, you can go to the fridge and eat food. You know, you oh, can yeah. go over here and do something. So, you know, my thought on that one was, could it be? I'm not saying it is, but could it have been something like that where somebody goes, no, we were all here, but did you know if you were there or not? Maybe somebody was up and sleepwalking. Or if somebody takes weird. Ambien. Ambien does yeah, weird things too. True. You know, I mean, sometimes there's those sorts of things that, that happen. Now, the the brush thing is weird. And, you know, I kind of kind of can relate with this guy because I've been having weird things in my bedroom that, you know, this one that happened to him just seems so strange. Like, if I don't know if there were, he said something about his nephews, so whether there were small kids in the house or maybe they're teenagers, I don't know how old these kids are, but who could care about your brush? Right. Like, who, who would stop and think, I'm going to mess with him? How could I do that? I will break his brush into three pieces and make it look like it's sort of burned. Like, who would do that? I mean, it's not something anyone would do. Well, and that almost but, sounds like You know, like if you a, were being a jokester, like you know what I mean? Like an ambient slash sleepwalking thing. Like, you know, because I knew this guy who would... It's not a rational thing. He would... um at work would get a box and he'd be like, Oh, guess I was um ambien shopping the other night. And he would just oh, no. shop get on Amazon. And yeah. And he would just buy this stuff and have no idea. He's like, Oh, it's like a surprise every time this happens. And I'm like, You do know that that's if you're terrible. taking Abby Ambien and you are Shopping, that's not sleeping, right? That's just blacked out. Yeah, <laughs> like, and you do know that, like, what's the next step? You get in your car and think you'll go shopping at Dylan's? Yeah, he said that he had one night seen on his Fitbit that he had walked, he had left his house and walked like two miles. See, creepy. Creepy. So that's when he's telling that story. I'm thinking of that. And yeah. not saying that anybody in the house is an ambient person, but maybe just throwing out some ideas. He took mm -hmm. melatonin. I don't have that great of luck sleeping with melatonin, let alone destroying something while <laughs> taking melatonin. It helps me a wee little bit, but not much. Yeah. Well, do you, I just, the brush thing gets me. The other thing I kind of see, but I just don't know how somebody goes in. And like you said, they would have had to have done it right next to him or at least picked up the brush broken into pieces brought it back in the room leaned over him put this thing away just seems like a lot of but um, the other weird thing is it does stuff. seem like a lot for a paranormal activity to never have had it before or since yeah like, that doesn't make any sense either that all of a sudden one night your place was haunted and they destroyed a brush and that was the one paranormal experience. That doesn't make sense. Now, that either. doesn't mean that other things aren't happening. And, and it doesn't. And, you know, like in my situation, you know, something might happen and then might not happen for two months. But, you it know, happens. and then some yeah. little thing will happen and I'll tell you guys about it. And then maybe in a week, but then maybe in three months. You know, it, do, it doesn't happen on any sort of regular, you would think it would happen weekly or daily or whatever. It just doesn't work that way. But it doesn't sound it, like there's any other paranormal experiences in that place. That he knows mm. of. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. Right? Like, what are the things that might be happening that people just don't notice? Right. right? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that's interesting. I think he'd be a good one to actually have where we could talk to him. 
Mm-hmm. And we could be like, what about this, 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 this? Mm-hmm. Have you asked your sister about this, this? And she did seem kind of, you know, creeped out about the the brush thing. That seemed to kind of freak her out. And maybe, like I said, you know, maybe things are happening and they're small things and people just think, oh, darn, that bulb broke, you know, or, oh, shoot, this got moved over here, move it back, you know, or whatever. And there's enough people living in the house. You just think your husband did it. You think your brother did it. You think one of the kids did it. Right. You know, and maybe not. Hmm. I don't know. I wish I had a good explanation for that one. I feel more paranormal as far as the brush thing goes. The other thing I'm wondering if somebody's out, uh, walking around mm-hmm. in their sleep or something like that. But or the, the brush Ambien thing, thing could, I guess, explain somebody walking around in their sleep doing weird things. Yeah. I, I, I mean, know. it could be. Well, let's do know? one more quick story. It says, hi, my yeah. name is Danielle. I'm from central New York State. When I was growing up, we moved a lot, and I've had my fair share of spooky and unexplained happenings. But the one I'm going to tell you is the one that sticks out to me the most. When I was 12, we moved into a small little home. After we settled in, I realized something was eerily familiar about this home, and that's when it hit me. I had previously dreamt about this home. I know I had never been there before, and I distinctly remember the dream. I remember every detail to this day, like I just woke up from it. In my dream, the house was vacant when I walked through the front door. No furniture, no people. I walked up the stairs that led directly into two rooms separated by a doorway. I walked through the first room and into the second. I entered the walk-in closet and opened the door into the cubby hole in there, I found a bag, and when I opened it, there were dead bodies. That's not real life. That's the dream. Now, this right, is where it gets still, creepy. Still, it's super creepy. creepy. The house layout was exactly like my dream. I told my best friend about this, and we decided to open the cubbyhole door, and I shit you not, there were three garbage bags in there. As far as I know, they were there were only old clothes in them, but I was so freaked out because it was in my dream. That's only the start of weird things. The second room was also cold and creepy, so I blocked it off. What led me to do that was one day I had to practice singing for a choir concert and decided to record myself. I went into the walk-in closet because I didn't want to disturb my parents, and when I listened, the recording was fuzzy, like a radio station that you can't get to come in. It could be debunked as radio waves interfering, but no one had one in the house. And it could be like maybe there was something kind of pressing up against the little microphone on the speaker that she had noticed. Maybe that could have done it. Maybe. I was so creeped out by that house that at 12, I still used a nightlight. You'd always hear weird creaking, and I absolutely hated staying home alone. One night while I was on the computer, things from the bathroom somehow ended up dropping at my feet. This should be impossible because everything that had fallen was on shelves in the corner of the bathroom. And the icing on top of this creepy cake actually happened at my 13th birthday party. It was me and about five other girls. We were in the basement watching movies when the cellar door opened. And seconds later the door to the backyard opened. We all got spooked and we made the oldest girl close the doors. When we woke up the next morning, the doors were open again. I have a hard time believing a draft opened these doors because it never happened again or before and the doors were new and latched well. At 23, I still don't know how I had a dream about this house before ever seeing it. I'd also like to add that the house is old. It was built in 1900 and is located in a small town alongside the Erie Canal. The town is rich in history and scary stories. Love you guys, Danielle. Mm. That is interesting that, you know, I think though that has happened to a lot of people probably listening that they've had some sort of premonition dream. I've had them. Mm -hmm. And that's what that was. Now, mm-hmm. why you're dreaming about the haunted house you're going to move into? I but- have always wondered if it's 
that, you know, the cosmos, the world, the universe, the higher consciousness, God, any whatever, wants you to, um, when something is difficult is going to happen, it's a way to prepare you for it. Oh. Now, I don't know about this, you know, opening up the cubby and there's bodies in it, you know, kind of thing. But... It, you know, I've always wondered when I have a premonition dream, and then I think, was it there to help me get through something? Was it there to kind of pave the way so I would know the right path to take? You know, um, maybe this dream was there to kind of um, warn her, you know. Yeah, that would make sense, a warning. That, you know, it, it was kind of a warning. Okay, so you're going to have this happen. You're going to go through here. There is, there is going to be evil in this house. Now, they showed it by bodies in there. But, you know, there will be some spirits in this house that are, you know, causing some issues or whatever. It doesn't sound like anything actually hurt them, but it did scare her, you know. And, and I just wonder if, if it was a way to prepare, kind of warn her. That makes know. some sense. And I think at 12 years old, you have a dream like that or however old, 10 or 11, when she moved in there, you don't have a say. It's your parents. Mm -hmm. They went out and bought or rented this house. You just get to move in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you don't have a say. So, you know, it'd be different, I think, if that happened as an adult and you went to look at a house and they're like, wait a minute, I've dreamt about this house and it was well, creepy. Then you wouldn't you know take the house. Here's what I think. I always go a step deeper with premonition dreams than that. I think we all have them all the time. We just don't remember. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, uh, we go into something and then we do get that flashback of that dream and here I yep. am and, you know, whatever. But I, I think that we get them a lot and it's kind of to help us through, you know, and to kind of guide us and direct us. But I, I think they happen a lot. We just don't remember. I think our dreams do that kind of a lot of times. I do too. And I agree with you. I, I think that that house, though, is very haunted. I do too. Ooh, yeah, I totally think it was. And I, But I think it was sort of, you know, preparing her that she, this was going to happen. And, you, you know, know, that dream thing, that could happen to her again. It's happened before, mm -hmm. so if it does, don't be too surprised. Yeah. Hopefully it's I not agree. about a haunted house you're going to move into. So if you have a real ghost story to share with us, call it in 855-853-4802 or write it in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you want to be a premium subscriber, get advanced episodes, access to the archive, and no commercials, sign up through Apple Podcasts or patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. For all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you for listening.